photography, Alec Watson, and in this video, we're going to dive into a little bit of storytelling narrative and how to get better image separation through AI when AI doesn't appear to be your friend. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, sometimes AI sees things differently to us. And so that can be problematic if you, if you have a way of doing things, which I've shown in previous videos, where we do AI selections to make great separations. Sometimes it doesn't work. I found one of those times when it doesn't. We're gonna take this image here. And this is, again, an image I found on Unsplash. I, I actually really like this image, pulling this into the develop suite. Uh, this pigeon around these domed roofs. Clearly a very processed image. I would process it differently. Doesn't mean it's better. I'm gonna show you how I would process it differently. And in doing so, we're gonna come across a problem. Here's how this works. So, when I look at this image, I would say overall, it lacks a little bit of color. They, they've clearly desaturated this image. It's also a little bit over sharp. I'm gonna do another version where we soften this out. When I look at this, I like the contrast and color on our bird here, on our pigeon. Our pigeon looks good, but our surroundings have been desaturated and they appear to be desaturated on purpose. I would even say this bird looks like it might have had some AI work done on it. Maybe that's why AI is having trouble with it, but watch, watch what's about to happen. If I want to select uh, this bird to do some work on, to get a little more color in, when I go to select the subject on this, for whatever reason, the AI decides that, oh, you want those windows. I don't want those windows, I want this bird. This makes this a great image to show you a new trick. So that would be this mask here. We don't want this mask. We're gonna delete, oh, we're gonna delete this mask. Delete mask. We want an object mask. So to get an object, we just draw around our object. And then the AI is going to create a mask for that. And yet I already knew <laughs> this was still gonna be a problem. And it's not that I'm picking uh, on the AI. Uh, AI is sometimes like a great friend at doing this. Like this has done a better job than I can do, but for whatever reason, the AI is struggling this in, with this. And it might be that this bird is in, in actual fact, like a composite that was put on top. And so the AI sees the pixels different. I, I know this bird is, it's amazingly sharp. There's something suspicious about it. The AI is struggling with it. So one of the things that we can do to get this, because once we've created an object, if I go to, I can add to my selection, I can draw another circle around this wing and say, add that wing in. And it's still having all sorts of problems with getting this bird masked for me. So let me do the whole bird one more time. So what we can do is our masks are here where we select a mask. We can also right click on this. This is where we can invert, clear the mask, delete the mask. Here's a cool one that somebody was thinking about at ACDC. Thank you for this. Convert to brush mask. So this is now no longer an, an, AI, like an AI driven mask. I can draw on it drawing pen, and I'm just going to draw the mask in on this bird. It's not going to be as good, but when the AI is just not seeing things the same as we do in our world, because AIs honestly don't, they don't actually see things. See things. We don't even, we're not even sure how AIs work, to be honest, but for whatever reason, it does not see this subject the same as us. Okay, and clearly my hand made something up here. We just want to erase that. So I right click, I make a bigger nib width, and I right click, and that becomes my erase tool. Now I have, there we go. Let's zoom back out, get this to actually fit. Now I have a well-masked bird. This allows me to do a couple of things, one, I can increase the exposure slightly on this bird, which always makes things pop a little more. So we're getting a little more pop on our bird. 
even though this, this bird, like I said, really pops on here. I suspect something was going on here. So I've added some more contrast. If I go show original, we're getting more detail in our, in our, just our bird, which is awesome. But when I look at the background, I think to myself, self, I'd really like to see um, some more color in that. And maybe I don't want to add color to the bird. Like I, I could, you know, the bird's got a lot of gray, but our bird's little feet in there, they're gonna, if I start, they're already well saturated. If I add a bunch of color to, let's go general here, I'll show you, rather than talk about it. Uh, sorry, let's go with, there we go, saturation. As I pump up the saturation to get it to a level that makes me look happy, my bird starts to really look plasticky. I don't know if you're noticing that, but these feet are just like extra orange feet. It looks like I've definitely over amped that. So if I take that back, because we've got the bird masked, one of the things we can do, we can go back to our masking. We can, there's our bird mask right here. I can take this mask and I, oops, I can duplicate this mask. Now I've got two versions of the bird. These are both a bird, but the second version of the bird, I can invert this mask, which means I'm gonna select everything the other way around. Now I have my entire background separated from the bird, so I can add saturation to my background and not touch the bird at all. And this, this for me is just a superpower. I can also take the exposure down. And when you're trying to separate things, if you sometimes taking your exposure down just a touch will really start to make things pop. For my eye, th this sky looks a little bit purple. If I create a new mask for my sky and I select the sky, let's see what happens this time. Okay, it has selected our sky and it's missed the bird, awesome. Now what I was suggesting with the sky is I'd like to see more of a cyan sky. This sky looks a, a, a little bit on the purple side for me, which I, I, I don't love purple skies. They're, they're not sky. So I would take this sky and I'm gonna, for hue, I'm gonna move the color strength way up. Now this is a little bit green. I'm gonna slide that hue slider till I get a cyan color. There's my cyan color that I'm after. And then I'm gonna take the color strength back till it did, because that's way too plasticky, till it looks less plastic. There we go, there's my, there's my cyan sky, maybe, maybe a hint more than that. And you'll notice that right around the bird, um, the clouds, they, they don't look quite right. We can go in and, and adjust this mask, right? We can take a nib, let's zoom in, 200%. Oh, and it's got the right area anyway, and we're just going to add to our sky selection. There we go. And it's a soft brush, so I actually hit the bird a little bit there. Let's not do that. So right click to erase the mask. I'm gonna just take that a hint off of our bird. There we go. And zoom back out. Here's our original. Here's our current version. And then lastly, not loving the, the crop on this one. Our, our bird's ending up maybe a little bit in the center. And this area down here, th this is a di distraction in color and texture that I don't think is necessary. So I'm gonna go into geometry. I'm gonna make a new crop of this image. I like that much of the image there. Let's have a look here, see if I can get rid of that out of the bottom there. I've mentioned before, I don't like little, tri I don't like little triangles facing out of the corners of frames. So I always try to keep the corners really simple. So taking a peek around the corners, all my corners are now simple. I've got this nice diagonal line still in here. And this is all supporting uh, the bird flying out of the frame. Maybe even give, even use up all the room on there. There we go. Now, I could just click manage and save and have this finished this way. This is, this is probably what I would do. But sometimes when I want two copies, as I do in, in, 
at this moment because I want to show you guys a copy. So let's, we'll call this one finished. This one's actually going to make a new JPEG. And when I click manage, I'm going to say no to these changes. And the only reason I would do that is just so I can show you guys a really good comparison between these two images. I want to take that one and this one. I'm going to put them, I'm just going to drag them down into my image basket. The two images are selected. I'm going to put them side by side. And boom, original image on the left, uh, purpley sky, uh, desaturated, birds flying in the middle. Over on the right, we've got a much more colorful version. We changed out the sky to get more of a cyan cast on the sky, which the bird pops out of uh, much better than kind of the purpley color. And we've brought some, we've brought some color back into the building. Uh, for me, that's a much stronger image on the right. In our next lesson, I'm actually going to take this same image and show you what I would do in the edit suite. Because sometimes for separation, we want to be able to blur things and, and choose our depth of field after the fact. One of the things that's distracting to me is just how sharp this building is, which, which makes me think that this bird was actually an potentially an addition in post because that's, that's a whole lot of depth of field going on. If you want to catch that, next video. In the meantime, uh, masking and adapting masking, that's going to be your secret weapon to take your images up to the next level. So get out there, take photos, share them on social, share them with us because doing that makes the world a better and more beautiful place. Yeah.